The short version sounds great, but what is the peripheral pin select? The PPS is basically a digital multiplexer placed between many of the digital peripherals and the pins. I need to take a moment to note that much of this presentation is based on the peripheral pin select function as implemented on the PIC24 FJ64 family. Please consult the data sheet of the device you're interested in for exact details. The peripheral pin select can multiplex up to 76 peripherals onto 26 or 16 pins on our 44 and 28 pin devices. On future devices, the number of pins tied to peripheral pin select will be adjusted to suit the device. In addition to providing designers with a way to use the peripherals they need, PPS also allows a designer to change the pin out of a peripheral via software while the device is operating. I will touch on this a little more in later slides. Another way to understand the PPS is to understand what it is not. What it is not is a way to achieve pin compatibility. The PPS is designed to provide a cost-effective access to the needed peripherals on a feature-rich microcontroller. Multiplexing the analog functions and some other peripherals increases the cost and difficulty and are things we felt we should avoid. In general, all analog functions and pins that require analog functions are fixed. Large peripherals like the parallel master port are also fixed. So what are some of the benefits of the peripheral pin select? At this point I'd like to summarize some of those benefits before we dive into the details of how it operates. The primary benefit of the peripheral pin select is that it allows a designer to access the exact peripherals they need. Compared to the multiplexing used in most microcontrollers, the PPS often allows a designer to utilize a smaller, cheaper package. In the past, one way to get around a larger package was to recreate the peripheral function in software. Using a device with the PPS allows a designer to reduce the software complexity by fully utilizing the hardware peripherals on the device. Finally, peripheral pin select also allows a designer to optimize the pinout of the device. Specifically, the device pinout can be changed to place the required function on the correct side of the device to reduce board layout complexity or even improve EMI. Now let's take a look at how the PPS works. All the features of the peripheral pin select are controlled through three sets of special function registers and one control bit. The special function registers and configuration bit perform three basic functions. The first is to lock and unlock the ability to change the pin definition. The second and third functions are the definition of the input and output pins. Two bits are used to control the ability to write the function mapping registers. The first bit, IO lock, is used to prevent writes to the function mapping special function registers. The IO lock bit can be cleared, allowing the function mapping registers to be written by writing an unlock sequence to the OSCON register. The second bit is the IOL one-way bit in the CW2 configuration register. When IOL one-way bit is set, the function mapping special function registers can only be written as the device comes out of reset. When IOL one-way is set, the IO lock cannot be cleared. The remappable peripheral input registers are used to map the pins to a given input function. The remappable peripheral output registers are used to map the output function to a given pin. Next we'll take a look at how these registers allow us to configure the device. When the device comes out of reset, the PPS feature must be configured from a default state. Once the PPS is configured, the IO lock bit is typically set, protecting the PPS from inadvertent writes. If your plan is to fix the pin out of the device and you want to maximize the protection of the function mapping special function registers, the IOL one-way bit in CW2 configuration register should be set. The IOL one-way bit makes it so that the IO lock bit cannot be cleared by the unlock sequence and the PPS cannot be changed after the part is locked after reset. If you're looking for the flexibility to change the pin out of the device through software, the IOL one-way bit should be cleared. This allows a series of writes to unlock the PPS. The lock or unlock sequence consists of a write of 46 hex and 57 hex to the OSCON register. 
The write should be immediately followed by a write to set or clear, depending on your need to unlock or lock the PPS, to the I.O. lock bit. Once the PPS is unlocked, the input and output mapping registers can be written. After modifications have been made, the PPS should be locked. As always, with a function this powerful, great care should be taken when modifying the pinout. While the PPS provides tremendous flexibility, care must be taken to prevent inadvertent pinout changes. In addition to the IOL one-way and IO lock bit, there is a monitoring function that operates in the background to make sure there are no unexpected changes. The PPS function mapping registers are shadowed and monitored on a continuous basis. If an unexpected change is detected, the device is reset. Next I will cover the input mapping registers. The remappable pins on the PPS are multiplexed so that any one of them can be connected to the input function on a peripheral. The PPS logic contains no hardware enforced lockouts so there is tremendous flexibility. For example, a single input pin can be mapped to multiple peripherals. The peripheral pin select function is described in the I.O. port section of the device data sheet. In the peripheral pin select section you will find a complete description of the control of the PPS and the input and output definition registers. An input pin is mapped to an input function by writing the five bits corresponding to the RPN pin designation to the appropriate RP INR register. For example, to map RP8 to input capture 5, a hex 8 would be written to the peripheral pin select input register 9. Mapping the pin to the input function prevents multiple pins from being mapped to a single input, eliminating possible contention caused by multiple inputs. One word of caution, just because something can be done doesn't mean it should be done. Not all connections allowed by the PPS are electrically possible in your circuit. The remappable output functions of the PPS are multiplex so that any of them can be connected to an RPN pin. Once again, to maintain flexibility, the PPS logic contains no hardware enforced lockouts. An RPN pin is mapped to an output function by writing a 5-bit value designating the desired function to the appropriate pin mapping register. The 5-bit value associated with the desired output function is written to the RPORX register for the intended RPN pin. Mapping the output function to the pin prevents multiple output functions from being mapped to a single pin, eliminating the possibility of contention caused by multiple outputs on a single pin. While the PPS is intended to allow designers the maximum access to the peripherals on a device, there were a few interesting byproducts of the implementation. First, the peripheral pin select can be used to increase the drive strength of a peripheral. This is accomplished by assigning an output function to multiple RPN pins, allowing additional current drive capability and reducing external components. The second byproduct is the ability to map multiple input functions to a single pin. There are numerous practical uses for this. Interrupts can be mapped to another peripheral's input to allow for easy bug fixes or extra interrupt operations. It also allows for diagnostic capabilities. An input capture can be mapped to the same pin as an incoming or outgoing signal to ensure that the signal is correct. Finally, the PPS allows the output of one function to be mapped into the input of another. We found this to be particularly useful for our initial code development when we would tie the UR transmit to the UR receive line. This allows a programmer to easily monitor a UR transmission. While the primary intent of PPS was to allow designers access to the needed peripherals in a small pin count package, it has also turned out to be a useful debug tool. 